many folks are familiar with the Pinball Lounge? Great. We really, I can't tell you how much we appreciate each and every one of you from the bottom of our hearts. I mean, we just, we, Kurt and I started this thing four, almost five years ago. It's kind of a funny story because we actually started, the Pinball Lounge started kind of here at Free Play Florida. Kurt, who's my co-partner, um, and also co-owner of the lounge, we'd been friends for a long time. I sold his parents his first pinball machine. I used to go over his house when he was a kid and help him work on it and, and just kind of saw him grow in pinball. And I'd been into it since the 70s. Uh, my mom and dad got me my first machine as a kid for Christmas. Um, so we both have that in common, that we both got our, our Christmas gifts were pinball machines. But um, five years ago at this event, uh, we were sitting there, and he's doing his raw power thing, and, and we, we kind of kind of met up. Hey, how you been, buddy? Haven't seen you in a bit. Yeah, well, it's going good, going good. I'm, I'm, I got machines on locations here, and I'm working on this and doing that. And so you know what? We really ought to start something. We ought to start our own thing. We probably, we've got enough machines between the two of us. We could easily open up a spot. Got some folks over here on the left-hand side that, uh, that Kurt's friends with, and I'm now friends with, too. Kurt and Joe, if you guys could stand up for a minute. These folks, if it weren't for these folks, Pinball Lounge wouldn't exist. But, we, but Kurt, Kurt operates some games at the bowling center in Oviedo. If you, those of you have, who haven't been to Oviedo or haven't visited the Pinball Lounge, I definitely encourage you to do so. Um, but we're pinball enthusiasts first. But anyway, so he, he's like, yeah, I got some games in the, in the, in the, in the arcade area of the bowling center. And, and Kurt goes, hey, you know what? You ought to take some games and put them in the, in the lounge area. we got like a bar area back there. And it wasn't the most inviting place. If those of you have been there before that. And <laughs> he says, you know, the other day I put a quarter in there, and nobody even picked it up. He says, yeah, but I turned it over. So anyway, it's just it was, it, nobody was in there. We had a poker team that would come in on a couple times a week, so we're like, we, we struck up an agreement, and a, we had some conversations, hey, Ed, we might have a place for us to put our games, so one thing led to another, and bam, we put 14 pinball machines in there, and we, we did a little minimal advertisement, you know, we got, like, whatever change we had in our pocket, we're like, okay, let's see if we can buy a cheap banner, like, let's just do this, and so anyway, we, we did some, we redid the, the inside of the place, and that was four years ago. And here we are, and we've got 32 games, and we're hosting state championships. We've got, we're, we're, we're fortunately, we've got some of the best players in the country. A matter of fact, in the world, actually. Nick Mueller uh, won the tournament last year at our facility and went on to come in 16th in the world. Came in second in the nation. We had uh, Eric Stone came in a couple years before that, won the state championship, went on to win the nationals. And I think he came in like 32nd or something in the, in the nation or the world. But it's just, you know, we just, anyway. I'm rambling, and you'll learn that that's kind of what I do. All right, let's ramble about some learning how to do, uh, how to play pinball better. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start with some basics. Now, some of you are going to go, this is way too basic, but there's a lot of common sense here that people don't think about when they walk up to a pinball machine. First thing you need to do is you need to know the game. You need to know what game you're playing. There's different pieces of the game, and everybody's going to go, oh, this is way too easy. The apron. That's this area down at the bottom of the pinball machine where the ball goes and drains. You don't like that area. But I'll tell you why you do need to know about that area. The cabinet, the back box, and the play field. That's where that ball's rolling around. Now, why, I'm sure here, who, is there anybody in this room that has not played pinball? Okay, great. I'm going to be teaching you some things. Now, one of the first things you need to know when you walk up to a pinball machine is what? How much does it cost? Can I, do I, can I afford to play this game? That's one of the big issues that we have. People walk up and they, hey, I put a quarter in Elvira. Well, Elvira is a dollar. Sorry, put 75 cents more in or we'll credit it up or whatever. But it's important to know, first off, how much does the game cost? Can I afford to play it? Are there any discounts? A lot of times you'll see a game that says one play for a dollar, three plays for two dollars. Or one play for 50 cents, three plays for a dollar, whatever. But you'll notice that there's a lot of times there's a discount. So you might want to put some additional money in the game. Another thing, how many balls per play? Is this a three ball game or it's a five ball game? Now you'll find kind of both out in the, in the, the area out there about back. But uh, mo most games you'll see today are three balls. Another is what's the score required for a free play? A lot of your older games 
on that pricing card will tell you, okay, I need to get 135,000 in order to get a replay. Replay is a free game. Instruction card, very important. If I walk up to the game, a lot of times I don't know what I need to do. I don't know what goals I need to achieve. That instruction card gives you a very high level overview of what you need to do to, to basically win at that game or do a good job at that game. Tell you how to play, tell you what the different features are. It'll also tell you how to achieve multi-ball if that game has multi-ball. So the instruction card is very important. The cabinet, what's important about the cabinet? What buttons are on the cabinet? Obviously there's flipper buttons, one on each side. That's standard. However, sometimes there are extra buttons on the side. There are different feature buttons. Case in point, we have people come up to the Munsters, the brand new Munsters game that's out there. Um, you'll see that people will come up to that game and they'll say, hey Ed, the lower play field doesn't work. The grandpa play field doesn't work. Why is that? Because there's two additional flipper buttons that they didn't notice on the cabinet before they walked up to play the game. Medusa. I'm not sure if anybody here's played Medusa before. There's actually an additional flipper button on the side of the game that controls a little mini flipper that's in, the, in between the flippers. Black Knight, Magnus Save, additional buttons on the side of the cabinet. So pay attention and look at these things before you ever even start the game. You'll end up playing a lot better. We'll get into the techniques later. I know that's really where you want to go, but you'll end up, you'll end up, you'll find that you'll be a lot more satisfied and you'll get a lot of better game and a lot better enjoyment out of it if you look at these things before you start playing. Lockdown bar, real popular thing right now is the lockdown bar, there's a button on it. And that button is not always the same. Game of Thrones has taught us that. <laughs> game of Thrones versus Black Knight, Sword of Rage. If you go out here and play either game, they should both be out there. You'll notice that the Game of Thrones does something totally different than the, the, uh, than the Black, Side, Black Knight, Sword of Rage. Can't give you an example. Game of Thrones, you can actually, uh, you can launch the ball, you can choose what house you want to be in, but if you, and, and a lot of times when you go to drain, the ball goes to drain, a lot of people hit that button because they get additional points at the end. Black Knight, Sword of Rage, you're playing the same game, that's a magnet save. You don't realize it, but that's a magnet save. All of a sudden, I hit that button, when that ball goes to drain, guess what? I just threw away my magnet save. My, I, uh, my, my chance of being able to save that ball when it came back. So note what that button does. Start button, different on a lot of your old games. If you go out and look at the EMs, you look, go out and look at the different manufacturers, that start button, a lot of times this is in a different spot. And the plunger or the launch button. Note where that is and note how to use that. There's a lot of that, that might interrupt or, or cause you not to get a skill shot or cause you to plunge the ball in an area that you don't want it to go. Back box, a lot of your older guys, or a lot of your older games rather, their indicator lights up there. Did I tilt? What player is it? Um, what player is up? What, where's, uh, did I, um, a lot of times, you'll even see this over in the tournament next door. Oh, hey, I didn't realize it, but I was playing Harlem Globetrotters, and I got an extra ball, and it's, there's no fancy displays or, or music or anything on Harlem Globetrotters. You just ended up getting an extra ball, and if you didn't notice that a light lit in the back box or on the play field, you might plunge the next player's ball and cancel, and basically, uh, what is it, help me out. Yep, you, you, would, you would become disqualified. So it's important to note these indicator lights. The tilt, it'll tell you if you tilt it or not. What the high score is. Your scoring display, there's different scoring displays. As if anybody's been out there, you've seen that on the old EM games that they're score reels as opposed to early solid state games uh, where they're more like a digital look. And it'll, they'll, they'll tell you different information your dot matrix displays that you've got, and then the newer LED, LCD displays that basically give you almost anything, any information that you want right there at that display. The play field, obviously. What's the layout? What's the flipper location? Some games have two flippers, some games have three, some games have four. Take a note, scan with your eyes, do I, how many flippers do I have? Slingshots, generally you're gonna have two. Flight 2000, wide body stern, it's got slingshots in the upper area. Slingshots are what, what, control, what make the ball go from left to right. What you don't want when you're playing pinball is left to right motion. You do not want horizontal motion. You want to do everything in your power for the ball to go vertically. It's very difficult to catch the ball or control the ball when it's going from left to right. In lanes, those are the balls that roll the bat, roll, that, those are the lanes that roll the ball back to the flipper generally one on either side, 
and you have outlines, those return it back to the apron. And then you have targets, and they're all over the place. And that's actually what we're trying to do. We're trying to, how do we hit those targets and how do we hit them better? What are some of the good techniques that we can learn to do that? Shot indicator lights. You know, I'm sitting here, Ed, and I'm playing this game, and I don't know how to get cheap multiball. A lot of times you'll see written on the play field where that multiball light's at. How do I lock a ball? How do I release it? Those types of things. Just take a look at that play field and look at those shot indicator lights, they'll tell you. Ramps. Ramps are interesting. Ramps on a lot of newer games. Now, one of the great things about ramps is ramps most, a lot of times, will return the ball to the flipper. If I'm not very good at transferring the ball from one side of the game to the other, I may be able to play a game that, it, a lot, that has a ramp that returns it from one side of the play field to the other. Taxi, if anybody here's played taxi, you'll know what I'm talking about. Terminator, I think, is a good game for that. Some, some ramps return the ball to the same flipper. Some, returns it, some games return it to the alternate flipper. That may be a good way for you to, to boost your score because you know what? I'm not very good at passing the ball from one flipper to another, so I'm going to use the ramp to do that. Magnets. There's a lot of different magnets in some of the newer games. Some magnets, like on uh, Munsters, are designed to help you. They'll actually capture the ball and they'll, the game will do something and then it'll spit the ball back out. Some, ga some magnets, like uh, even uh, roller games is another good game. If anybody here has ever played roller games, roller games will actually stop the ball and allow you and tell you, don't flip the flipper. I'm, and and I want the magnet basically holds for a certain period of time so that you can then hit the ball and make a shot. Those are positive magnets. Those are magnets that are there to help you. But there are games like Adam's Family that you can't see the magnets. They're under the play field and they interfere with the ball. I've actually seen games of Adam's Family where the ball will go straight down the middle, stop, and go straight back up. It's, if you get a chance to, to experience that, it's really, really cool. Houdini, magnets under the play field. But a lot of those types of magnets are involved. They're basically designed to interfere with the game or randomize the game more. One more thing I want to mention about magnets. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people tell me, oh, this game's got magnets underneath it. I'm like, do you think there's magnets underneath this game? Some games there are, some games there aren't. And, yeah, oh, yeah, there's magnets underneath. Did you, did you see what that ball did? I'm like, yeah. You want to see underneath the game? And I'll lift the game. There are no magnets. I left the, left the game back down, and I asked the, asked the customer the question, what color is the ball? The ball is chrome. The ball is silver. If that ball is spinning at a high rate of speed, can I see that? Unless that ball scuffed up, more often than not, you cannot see if that ball has a spin on it. Now, keep in mind, this ball is going all over the place. It's hitting rubber. It's hitting steel. It's hitting ramps. You'll see balls crawl up the in lane with no apparent reason why it's doing that. It's because that ball happens to have a spin on it. That's one thing that makes this game so great and so, so difficult, yet so much fun to play, is you never know what that ball's gonna do. Great quote from a gentleman named Harry Williams. I'm sure you've all played Williams games. That was Harry Williams. The ball is wild, and he's absolutely correct. That ball can do anything, so. Let's begin. Starting the game. Again, as simple as this sounds, Doug, you play in our league. How many times do you see per, per out, throughout a league play that someone goes and they press the button once and not four times? We've got four people that play in league, right? We have two teams, four players per game. They walk up and somebody will press a button. And all of a sudden, the next per they finish their ball. The next person ball goes up and they start playing the game. They're like, hey, wait a minute. That was Tank's ball. Oh, oh, no. Come to find out that they did not press the button enough times for all the players. It happens all the time. Doesn't matter who you are or where you play. So it's one press per player. The player indicator light, um, Eight Ball Deluxe, um, Evil Knievel, a lot of these older games, they actually have a player indicator light to tell you which player is up. Again, you get an extra ball and you don't realize that you got an extra ball, the next player comes to play, if you're not paying attention to that player indicator light, you might end up playing someone else's game. Important to note. Plunging the ball. Now there's a lot of games out there that if you look on this where it says ax, those are, in, those are upper, upper in lanes, or upper lanes rather. You can, a lot of times on these games, you can use the flipper button to change the light that is lit at the top. 
Now, depending on the game, some games you want to roll over the light. Some games you want to choose the you know, lane, choose, basically choose the lane with the light. Some games you want to choose the game without the light to light it. That is important because when you go to plunge that ball, a lot of times you, you'll just, oh, it doesn't matter to me. We've got players in there that don't even really know that you could press the flipper buttons and change that light and where it belongs. But that'll actually help get additional scores. If you plunge the ball, you note where that indicator light is and you press the flipper buttons to move it, have the ball roll over that indicator light, and bam, you got additional points that possibly your partner didn't know about. Skill shot. A lot of the newer games have skill shots. What is a skill shot? When you plunge or launch the ball, there's a certain, you're basically trying to achieve a goal with just the shot, with just the plunge itself. Um, a lot of times, like I just mentioned with the lane change and the indicator, what you'll do, like uh, terminate, like, this is family guy here on the left, but you might plunge the ball a little bit and you'll notice that there's an indicator light that says skill shot. If you try to make that shot with the plunger, you end up getting additional points. There are also super skill shots. A lot of your newer games, if you hold the left flipper button down and then plunge the ball, the ball will orbit around to the flipper. And you can, once you, and you, what you basically try to do is on the fly, you try to make a shot. Example, try to hit the castle on Medieval Madness if you do that. Hold the, hold the flipper button down the left-hand side, plunge the ball, it'll come around, try to hit the castle gate. There's additional points there, things that you might not know about when you walked up to the game. Here's where we get fun. Controlling the ball. Some of the things I'm going to teach you today. Trapping, passing, saving, and aiming. These animations, by the way, are from deadflip.com forward slash tutorials. So I book that, bookmark that on your phone. It actually works very well on your phone. You can see them really well. Uh, but these animations, I, that's where I receive them, so I want to make sure that, that I give them credit for these. This is called the dead flip. What's interesting about the dead flip, sometimes the best move is no move. You guys are in a unique situation this weekend where you can walk out there and you can play pinball for absolutely free, what's your, your price of admission, but watch what that ball does. Don't flip the flippers. Plunge the ball, let it do its thing, and watch what that ball does. I'll bet that ball will hit, those, hit the flippers two or three times before you even needed to flip. It's important just to watch and note where that ball ends up to, because what will happen is that as it hits the flippers, the ball will slow down. It, it reduces its momentum. So the game's not near as fast like if I, I have an opportunity to catch that ball. I'm going to slow this animation down. Now, if you notice, the ball's hitting the flipper. It's bouncing off of the flipper and rolling up the end lane on the other side. I can then press the flipper button and catch the ball. Once I've got control of the ball, I can decide where I want that ball to go. The ball comes down, we'll speed it up a little bit. Ball comes down, bounces off the flipper, I did not flip, I just let it bounce, and then I catch, caught it with the other flipper. Full speed. Drop catch, this is probably my favorite. How many here have ever played egg toss with a raw egg? When you're playing egg toss with a raw egg, how do you catch it? Do you just grab it like a baseball? Absolutely, yes, absolutely. And then we make scrambled eggs after that and we're all good. Scrambled eggs out of your hand, that's gross. All right, anyway, when you catch an egg, you try to absorb that impact. You grab that egg and pull it back. Same principles apply here. You've got a ball screaming down the flipper. You release that flipper button at the right moment, and you'll, absolutely abs you'll absorb the impact of that ball and be able to catch it. I'll let this animation run one more time, and then I'll speed it up a little bit. The ball comes down. I release the flipper button. I then bring it right back up after the ball is already outside of the flipper, so I'm not going to impact the ball's moment momentum, and I catch it. Real time. Live catch. This is interesting in that you're almost, you're, you're flipping the flipper at the same time that the ball hits the flipper, which is, it, physically it's kind of interesting in that you're, you've got two things that are going at the same speed, same rate of speed, and they stop. They slow it down. So what this, what, what's happening here is the ball is going toward the flipper, and, and 
you have to judge when, that, when you think that ball is going to hit that flipper. You flip and it literally stops the ball, slows it down to nothing. And then the ball rolls down via gravity so you can catch it and make your shot. Post catch. This is basically, we're going to take the flipper and we're going to, as the flipper's coming down the in lane, we're going to flip the flipper quickly before it has a chance to roll off of that flipper. And what it ends up doing is it hits the bottom of the slingshot. So that's another way that you can catch a ball. Again, if you can't catch, if you can't capture the ball, you can't, it's more difficult to aim. Some people do what's called spray and pray, which is basically you just continue to try to keep the ball momentum as long as you can. Okay, yeah, let's see how long we can go. Well, this isn't ping pong. You know, this is pinball. You try to, st try to capture the ball, and then you try to aim the ball. As, as you get better throughout, uh, throughout time, you can get to a point where, you, where your eyes are good enough where you can actually judge, okay, yeah, that ball's coming down at the right rate. It's coming down the right spot on the flipper. Bam, I know that if I hit it right now, um, it's going to go up the ramp on the left or make whatever shot I need. Passing. What happens if the ball is on the right flipper, but there's really no shot on the right flipper? I need it on the left flipper. Great case in points, wizard. Wizard's a heavy, heavy-handed left flipper or right flipper game. There's not many shots on the left-hand side. All the shots are on the other side of the game. So it's best to have that ball on one side. And you'll notice this again if you if you go up, you study the play field, you look at the indicator lights, you see what's going on, see where the ramps are at, see what's going on in the game. You'll notice that this game seems to be heavy-handed on the right versus the left. Well, there are ways to be able to pass the ball from one flipper to another without losing the ball. One's called a flick pass. Notice the ball goes down the end lane. You give it just a little flick to get it over to the other side because it was, the ball was rolling too fast to be able to catch it with the same flipper. So I, in order to prevent losing the ball, I give it a small bump. It goes over to the other flipper. I then press that flipper button, hold that flipper, and I'm able to catch the ball. Next one, post pass. This is one of my favorite passes. This is interesting because what you're doing, the ball, you've got the ball captured. You do a quick uh, press and release of the flipper, and it bounces, and it'll hit the, uh, the bottom of the slingshot there and then send it over to the other side. This is a lot of fun to learn. It's one of my favorite passes from left to right. But again, you guys are in a unique opportunity where you can go out, you can go out to, the, to the game room there and just practice these things until you become better and proficient at them. A little faster. In real time. Nudge pass. This is basically where you, you, you can nudge the game. You've got to be careful nudging the game because if the tilt's set high, then you'll end up tilting the game. But you can give it a little bit of a bump. And actually, some people call it extending the length of the flipper. Obviously, the flipper is the length of that it is. But when you give it a bit of a nudge, you are actually moving the game slightly to the right or to the left. The ball is already traveling in, a, in the same direction. The ball doesn't really move to the right or left that quick. So if you nudge the game just a little bit, you'll extend that flipper just a little bit and nudge it over and bump it into the other side. Speed it up. One more time. Real time. Tap pass. Now, what, does anybody notice the difference in this animated GIF as opposed to the rest of them? What on this is different than the other games? The flippers are fatter. They're, their ballys are old Gottlieb's. Now, this is great for older games. But what you do is you don't even press the flipper button. You don't, you don't press and hold the flipper button. You basically just give it a little bit of a bump. You don't want the flipper to go all the way up. You just want it to just float. And that's exactly the way you would do a, a tap pass. This is great for games that don't have a standard configuration as far as a slingshot on one side or, or lanes on either side. Um, case in point would probably be Captain Fantastic. Um, some of your older games, a lot of times they'll, they won't, they'll have an a, a, a in lane that returns the ball to the flipper on one side, but they'll do something different on the other side. This is a great technique that, to learn to be able to pass the flipper from one side to another if you don't have that type of configuration. Now, this game, obviously, you could do a post pass as well. But it's called a tap pass. Just a little bump. Notice that flipper didn't go all the way up. A little faster. 
full speed. Loop pass. Basically, you're doing a combination of a drop catch and a dead flip. If you think of both of those, that's kind of what this is. Ball comes down, I do a drop catch, and I do a dead flip on the right-hand side because if I don't, if I flip, that ball's going to go back into the play field. Alley pass. Now, some people, call, they could call this, am I right when I say shats? There's a gentleman that's really proficient at this. Neil Schatz, tell us a little bit about him. Anything you know about him? Uh, he's uh, in a banner for the uh, uh, Football Hall of Fame, and uh, he's, he's won, I think, twice. Wow. And he's proficient in doing this so much so that he can basically, uh, on meaningful madness, light fire by himself without hitting anything else. Wow. And just sit there, just camp sit out on that one shot. In lanes, extra balls special, all kinds of stuff that's in the in lanes, you can grab it. Wow. In fact, actually, on um, uh, Demolition Man, there's a shot that you can shoot shots past right up the left in lane, go right into the eyeball. And wow. he's proficient enough at doing that, which they use in tournaments enough that he's able to uh, eke out scores higher than other players. Wow. We ended up, we had an issue, we've got a game called Gorgar uh, that will allow you to do this, and we actually have had some players, it's, it's almost an exploit. They just continue to do that, like you're saying, they, they've alley passed left and right, left and right, left and right. And so what we ended up doing is we modified the switches so that basically the switch is a one-way switch. It doesn't allow the ball to go the other way. And that, what that does is it forces the players to have to play the whole play field and not just do some gimmick like this. But this is interesting, though, that... You can literally, it, this is a very, it takes a little bit to learn this. It's extremely valuable, but it's very risky when you're playing for money because it's so, you have to hit the flipper so late and you're like, I'm going to lose it, I'm going to lose it, I'm going to lose it. But when you make it, it's very satisfying. It's a lot of fun. But alley pass. What's funny is you'll find your beginner players are more better at it than other players just because they don't they do it accidentally because they're not as as quick as some of us and, and they're you know anyway. Or it depends on how drunk you are. I imagine if you got pretty drunk, you'd probably be really good with alley pass. But um, we'll be working on that tonight. If anybody'd like to help, I'll help help you right there. All right. Use a drink after doing this. All right. Saving techniques, air defense. Now if I'm playing multi ball, I got two, three balls going at the same time. I've got a ball captured. The great thing about that ball captured is if I see a ball screaming down, the, getting ready to come down the center, bam, I can use that ball and intercept it. I've done this multiple times. Oh, doesn't look good. Better, sh yep, there we go. Bam, now, now I lost my captured ball, but I didn't lose anything either. So it's a risky move, but not hard to do. Center thrust. Um, not pelvic thrust, center thrust. You know, thinking the, I don't know, I'm always inappropriate. Anyway, uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show is where that came from, so don't flame me. All right, uh, <laughs> center post thrust. This only works on games that obviously have a center post. Terminator 2, um, somebody help me out. What's another game? What's that? Spider Man. Spider Man. Got it. A lot of games, if you look, they'll put a center post right below those flippers. So again, it's another one of those techniques. Sometimes the best thing to do is do nothing. Dead flip, center post thrust. But it, again, it requires judgment. A lot of times I've seen a lot of folks, you know, oh, I was counting on that center post to be able to bounce the ball back into play, and they miss it. But again, go out there and test it. That's slower. A little faster. You always learn what to do in a presentation and what not to do after the presentation is already over. Not sure if anybody's ever done that before, but. Thank you, sir. Love you, Curtis. <laughs> Slap save. Now, I do this. I don't smack the game, but this is another one of those flipper extending type, type things where you can actually nudge the game slightly. Again, you are scooting the game, not the ball. The ball is going to remain going in the direction that it's going. But, and again, you remind, think about this, these games are wet, they're waxed. 
you know, especially ours, I know, are well maintained in that if you scoot the game a little bit, like that ball's going to move in the same direction, but the play field will actually scoot. So this is another way of extending the flipper. This is the next one is one that I use all the time. I don't nudge the game, but I use this all the time. This is almost where you, you see the ball coming. You don't have enough um, you don't have enough flipper to be able to catch the ball. You don't have enough flipper to be able to make a shot, but you do have enough flipper to send the ball over to the other flipper to at least get it out of the way so you can try again when the flipper re reaches when the ball reaches those flippers again. Slow that down a little bit. Here it comes. Just hits the tip of one flipper. If you can hit it with the tip, most of the time you'll end up being able to save that ball. The double hit, bam, bam. Speed it up a little bit. And then real time again. Aiming techniques. Think pool, not pachinko. Who here knows what a pachinko machine is or has ever played pachinko? For those of you that don't know, it is a vertical Japanese pinball machine. When I say vertical, I mean it's like this. And there are balls that you sling with a little, it's not a flipper, it's like a mechanism that sends the ball up to the top and there's all the pins and it bounces around and might go into a hole and give you some additional balls, that kind of thing. But the game's played vertically. When you're watching a lot of these programs, okay, I'm watching Twitch and I'm watching some, con some contest or some you know, pinball tournament, and what are you seeing? You're seeing basically it appears like a giant pachinko machine and people are playing it. Well, that's not real pinball. Real pinball is played at an angle. And when we play pool, I'm sure just about everybody in here has experienced playing pool before. How do you play pool? You don't play pool like this. You play pool like this. You bend down, you shorten the shot. Do the same thing in pinball and you'll learn that your aiming becomes a lot better. Oh, there's a drop target over there. I've already hit two of them down. I've got my ball captured. I'm gonna lean down. Now, instead of it looking like this, this huge distance, I've now shortened the distance as I lean down, just like on the shot, on the picture there on the right. And I know if I hit the flipper right here, I'm gonna hit the drop target. More points, more replays, better experience. I'm actually gonna show a video. There's no audio though. These, this video teaches you when to hit the flipper and in what direction that ball is going to go. The further on the, the, toward the tip of the flipper, the further to the left or the right, depending on flipper, that that ball will go. If I hit it toward the, the end of the flipper, I go to the far left or far right. If I hit it toward the center of the flipper, if I push the button toward the center of the flipper, it's going to go toward the center of the play field. So the beginning of the flipper is going to either move toward the, toward the center of the play field or toward the right, and we'll get into that in just a moment. But you see, depending on when I flip that flipper or push that button, where that ball is located on that flipper depends on what direction that ball is going to go. You can add, this is really cool. You can actually, with a right flipper or a left flipper, you can actually have it go almost backwards. It's called backhanding a shot or back flipping it. It does require some momentum. See how the, how the player is giving the ball a little bit of momentum to roll up the flipper. And then right when it's at that point, toward the end of the flipper, they can flip it and the ball will actually go backwards. And a lot of times you'll get, you'll, Game of Thrones is a perfect game to practice this on because there's a lot of easy shots to ba do basically backhand or backflip. So if you get a chance to try this technique out, try it on Game of Thrones and you'll probably find that you'll be more successful in that game than other games. Yeah, you can. Absolutely can. The new Jurassic Park game by Stern. There's a raptor on the left-hand side, and if, you, if the ball's on the left and you have it cradled or captured, you can do this exact thing and end up getting a multi-ball just by using one flipper. All right, I'm nearing the end of my presentation. Great things about pinball. One of the things that got Kurt and I into pinball are some of the list of things I'm about to show here. First off, it's real. Pinball is real, it's not a virtual experience. There are virtual pinball machines, and I appreciate those. However, this is a real game, like real bowling, or real tennis, or this is a real physical game. So you're, you're dealing with 
real items. You're dealing with a ball that is not controlled by anything but you and gravity. So this is a real game. And with it being real, there's no two games are alike. No, no two games are going to be exactly the same. You know what? I get for some strange reason, I just get three billion on medieval madness every time I play it. No, you don't. You know, you might be good, but anyway, it's a real game and it's different every time. There are no patterns. There are rule sets. Each game's got a different rule set. Oh, hey, if I, if I click, hit this shot, hit that shot, and hit this shot, the castle blows up. If I shoot this shot over here, the dragon makes some noise. If I shoot that shot over here, oh, no, it's an old game, and it's a gobble hole. I just lost my ball. What? Anyway, there's a, there's a lot of different rule sets. Each game's different. That I'll give you. But the great thing about this, I can take this skill. If I learn to control this ball, aim the ball, do these different techniques, simple techniques, if I, if I learn to excel at these techniques, I can take that same skill to each game out there and expect to do well. Also, the better you play, the cheaper it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Video games, oh, I lost my three Pac-Man. Okay, well, it's another quarter. It's another 50 cents, whatever it is. But the better you get at pinball, the longer you can play, the cheaper it is to play. Also, you can win a free game, right, Kurt Van Zyl? Right, that's what got a lot of us into pinball. When you go up to your dad, you say, Dad, can I have a dollar? For what? What are you going to do for the dollar? I'm going to play pinball. Well, that doesn't do anything for me. I need the grass mode. No. Dad, can I have a dollar? Well, okay, all right, I get it. Go play pinball. And so you go play. Well, if I give you a dollar and you go play a video game, you're going to be back to me in 30 seconds. But with pinball, the better you get. I can, keep, I can get a replay. I can get a match. Again, find out what those replay scores are. Find out what it is to get a replay. A match, does anybody here not know what match is? Okay, I won't go over it. <laughs> Thank you. Go out there and play pinball. Support pinball. Play in tournaments. We love pinball. We love each and every one of you for joining us and, and helping us build what we've built. Well, thank you. Y'all have a great time. TPL on three. One, two, three. All right.